Hello everybody, it's good to see you again. So, another presentation regarding our publishing support. Uh, and this one is about the Oxygen Publishing template. Uh, today's agenda, first we will see what an Oxygen Publishing template actually, it, it actually is. I will present to you the built-in the built-in uh, templates. We have quite uh, a few of them. And of course, because one size doesn't fit all, um, there's also the possibility to customize and create your own uh, publishing templates. We will see how that can be done. And at the end, we will dabble into the virtually endless customization possibility that this um, template brings. So, what is an Oxygen Publishing Template? Well, a fa fancy definition uh, found in our documentation. An Oxygen Publishing Template defines all aspects of the layout and styling for output obtained from the following transformation scenarios. We have here the DataMap Web Help Responsive, the DataMap Web Help Responsive with feedback, and the DataMap PDF based on HTML5 and, and CSS. So what you notice from this first slide is data, this actually applies to uh, data. So when you publish data maps, uh, we've done this because we've noticed increased um, interest in um, uh, data XML vocabulary and um, its publishing uh, possibilities. Um, but to offer you a more mundane uh, definition, the publishing template is actually a package um, containing uh, an ex an, a descriptor file together with various resources like CSS files, um, maybe some JavaScript fonts, images, uh, various HTML uh, fragments and so on. So uh, the idea is to, to be self-containing and have all your resources and all your customizations into one package. Um, so first of all, let's have a look at the benefits it brings because uh, I'm trying to sell this to you. Uh, like I said, um, one size does not fit all, so no matter how many built-in such templates we try to create, it will always be something that it's not right for your company from the, um, and you, would, you would want to change. So uh, we designed this um, publishing template as a starting point for it to be a, an easy starting point for future customization. Um, it's also easy to share with others, so once you've created it, you just give the package to all interested parties and they'll have the same publishing. Uh, the same package can contain both a web help and a PDF customization and this means that you can also reuse some of the resources. We'll have a look at that later on. It will also make a painless upgrade to a new Oxygen version. This is um, one of the feedbacks that we received from our users when they started to customize um, these uh, outputs, Slavia responsive. You had to do various things in various uh, areas of the publishing pipeline and then a new version of Oxygen comes with a new and improved uh, web help and PDF um, outputs and you have to um, put your customization back in and that uh, was um, uh, a bit of a pain sometimes. And last but not least, it, will, it makes easier to publish in a continuous integration system because when evoking these uh, transformations, you can pass such um, a publishing template uh, through uh, system properties like uh, you see here on the bottom. Uh, okay. So in the following minutes, we will focus on the first three benefits and I will uh, present some um, customization use cases. We'll, we'll do it together. And uh, again, um, uh, I will try to convince you uh, of these uh, benefits. 
Um, so first of all, the built-in oxygen publishing templates, like I said, they're available for this ty these three types of transformations available in oxygen. So let's switch to oxygen. It's demo time. So I have um, a data map. It's basically an XML document. Uh, we can open it inside an editor to have a look at it. But um, so underneath, it's, it's just XML, a specific XML vocabulary. But uh, Oxygen offers this uh, specialized view. It's called the Data Maps Manager. To publish our um, content, we select the configure transformation scenario action on the toolbar. We select one, the, one of the predefined scenarios, the web help responsive. We duplicate it. Let's change the name. Let's say it's space exploration because our, my content is actually about space exploration. Um, so the first tab here are the templates, the built-in templates. On the top, you have some um, tags, some metadata to help you um, identify one of a template to your liking. So if I want tiles and maybe I want something blue, um, I see fewer. There's also a preview link. So if I click here on this I icon, um, it will open a already published content using this template to help me decide if uh, this is actually what I want to use. To use it, you simply select it like so. And then we uh, publish the content. The transformation runs here in the background. You see it on the bottom. That was a good time to grab a cup of coffee if you <laughs> have one near. But in a couple of seconds, we should have our published output. Awkward silence. <laughs> yeah, it worked faster. This is the live demo effect. It introduces a lag. Right, so this is our, the, our content about space exploration um, using this, uh, this template that I've chosen. Okay, so let's see how we can create a custom template starting from a, from a built-in one. Again, back to Oxygen. We go to the Configure Transformation Scenario dialog again. We edit the scenario. And again, we identify a template that it's a good starting point. Uh, maybe this time I'll choose another one. Uh, this light template that uh, it's a, a good starting point to build upon it. And to the first thing we have to do is to export it. We have this save template as action on the lower left corner. But before doing that, I will uh, choose configure publishing templates gallery. Uh, what's this about? Well, by default, Oxygen searches for this template in a predefined location, but you can define your own locations, and that this is what I'm going to do. Um, to make this setting shareable with a project, I will switch this to project level, which means that what I'm about to edit here will be safe in, inside Oxygen XPR file. So if I shared my project, this setting will be shared as well. Um, the path to this new location, again, I will use an editor variable, the project directory, to I, I stay away from absolute paths to, to make it shareable. And this is this template directory, it's a directory inside my project directory, which is OK. And now I will choose save template as, let's give it a name, space exploration. Um, all the 
parameters from the transformation scenario will be passed to the template because like I said we want it to be self-containing. We can include HTML page layout files. You don't have to but I, I will so I can uh, show them to you and explain what these are. And we choose the location where to export it and it, it is inside uh, this template uh, directory. So save. The template was saved successfully and actually it automatically appears here. You see the save space exploration. Um, let's have a look at what we've achieved. So if we go to the project, we refresh this template directory and now we see a zip file. So like I, I told you, the template is actually a package, an archive. Now you can either open the zip file inside Oxygen's archive browser and work with it or you can simply unzip it and um, Oxygen will um, still know how to find it and, uh, and load it. Now let's have a look at what it contains. So this is the descriptor, the descriptor file. Obviously it is an XML file. And um, here we have a preview image. These HTML page layout files. Let's have a look at, it, at them. So uh, these layout template layout files are basically just HTML file that we use as templates when we publish into Web Help Responsive. And in it, there are also some um, placeholders that the transformation will replace. F for example, here we have this uh, placeholder named Web Help Search Input will be uh, expanded will be replaced with um, with a search with a search field. So what you can do is you can play with these layout templates and move things around, change the layout to to fit your needs. Um, an another reason to export them into the template, like I did, is to lock them into place, you know, uh, because uh, new versions of Oxygen might uh, tweak, alter a bit the templates. So you, you don't want, uh, maybe, maybe you don't want these uh, surprises. You, you want these template layout files to be locked into um, a specific uh, way. So what else do we have? We have the parameters. Um, we have resources. This is the CSS used to, to render um, the output HTML, the online preview, and some tags. Uh, we can do some quick uh, customizations here. We can delete the online preview because it is misleading. We, uh, we don't have uh, a sample published. Um, our template is not going to be gray, it's going to be blue. And we can also add another, uh, add another metadata. Say this one, it's about space. It will help us um, identify it more quickly. Um, I also have another preview. So if I will ha copy some images inside the template, like so. And now I can change, oops, images. Notice that you have uh, content completion with uh, the files on the file system. Okay. Um, right, but before publishing with our template, Let's um, identify some uh, things that uh, we want to customize. So, for example, I would like a Rocket logo. Uh, 
next to the title and I want some cool fonts, more futuristic fonts to be used and a background image for the search field, we're searching the infinite, so let's put a galaxy there, space, the final frontier, oops, and so let's, let's do that. Again to oxygen, um, for the logo, this is an easy one. We have a logo element and we will just refer our rocket logo. Uh, I've prepared a CSS file that I will copy inside the template. Let's have a look at it. Basically, it just imports some cool fonts from Google and adds them on various um, elements, like so. So after copying the CSS inside the template, we return to the descriptor file and we tell it to use this additional CSS as well, the space CSS. Um, for the background image, what we need to do is to go to the browser and inspect a bit this search field and see that the div element containing the search field has this particular class um, token, the WH search input. So we, we can use this to write a CSS rule to add a background image. Back to oxygen and afraid that I might make some typo and waste valuable time debugging it. I've hidden this rule at the bottom. <laughs> so the rule, the selector matches that class uh, value like I've told you and we just put this image on, uh, on the background. Now one more thing that we need to do is we need to tell the transformation that we need resources from this um, image di directory and we do that by going to the template again and putting a file set inside the resources and we will include everything that's inside the images directory. Right, so I, I think I've done everything. Well, let's save this. So now again to the data maps manager. Let's edit the scenario. Make sure we select the new space exploration template. And we apply it. And unless something went horribly wrong, we should see some differences. Tum, 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 tum. It's the suspense that kills you, right? <laughs> right, so let's see. So we have the, lo the logo, check, cool uh, futuristic fonts, check, and um, the background image with a galaxy, check. So we've done pretty much everything that we wanted to do. But uh, let's have a look at other customization possibilities. S so another thing that you can do is you can use one of the predefined XSLT extension points. Um, because it would be a shame not to talk about XSLT in front of this crowd. Uh, so inside our documentation, you can see all the uh, available XSLT import extension points. So basically each one has uh, an ID and through it you can override a specific style sheet that um, produces HTML for for a data topic, for example. Um, 
in, in this case, what I want to do is I want to add a generation time in the footer of each page. So I'll go to oxygen. Again, to speed things up, I have some the resources already prepared. So I will copy the XSLT and I need one more thing. This is how I define it inside the, um, oops, not this one. So this is the XSLT extension point. So these um, are defined inside an XSLT uh, element container and we use this extension element we refer the XSLT file and uh, this is the ID of the extension point. So in this case, I want this style sheet to uh, override all these four um, XSLTs. So let's have a look at the XSLT. So what it actually does, it has a template that matches on a div element that has this particular class attribute. You might wonder how I knew this. Well, like I said, I want um, to put something in the footer. And if we have a look at the HTML layout template pages that I've mentioned earlier, you notice, you'll notice that the footer is actually this one here and it's a div element with this class attribute. So that's how I knew to match on, uh, on this particular value. And it also has a specific mode. I knew this because I had a look inside the um, XSLT that I'm actually overriding. This information again is available in, in the documentation. And I'm applying the default processing and afterwards, I'm just uh, putting my own element with, uh, with a current date. And because I want to make this um, uh, feature optional to activate it or deactivate it, I'm uh, checking the value of a parameter before doing this. So if this parameter uh, is yes, then I'll, I will add the generation time. And this is, uh, to check it, I, um, I use this um, extension function, the get oxyf uh, get parameter function. So uh, this uh, tells me that there's one more thing that I need to do. So here in my descriptor file in the parameters section, I will define this parameter with the yes value like so. Um, so I, I think I've, I didn't forget anything. Let's see if we get the generation time inside the footer. Okay, to the bottom, and we have it. So this is, uh, the generation time is here. Um, what next? Well, uh, let's add a copyright also inside the footer. And we can do this using another customization method, namely HTML fragment extension. Uh, what's this about? Well, uh, inside a layout template page, we define, we predefine a number of um, uh, areas, each one having a, sp a specific ID. So, and you can use these IDs to provide various HTML fragments to be put inside um, 
inside the page. And in our case, we want this number 12. And if we have a look in, if we take a look inside our documentation, we see that number 12 uh, is this, uh, this ID over here. Um, another challenge that we have here is that the um, copyright information it's present inside the XML source. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving an HTML fragment to be put there in the, f in the footer, but in it I want data from the original um, XML document. So that's, that's the challenge. And let's see how we can do that using this uh, extension point. So I will copy the fragment inside my template. We need this bit as well. So these extension points sit in a um, container named HTML fragments. And this on the fragment, on uh, such a fragment element, we uh, use this ID that we've no, uh, we've observed in the documentation, and the fragment that I want uh, inserted is this HTML fragment. It's a div element, the generated by, and uh, this is an interesting bit here. So this is how I I get data from the original XML document using this. WHC macro uh, placeholder. Uh, it's something that we will expand and its value, in its value I can use such a variable map expat and its value is an actual expat expression that will be executed on the XML document and we, it will give me that, um, that value. So if, if we take a look inside the data map, so we, we see this copyright information here. And uh, this is this expat uh, expression will extract that information from there. And we do that for the year and for the copyright holder. So I've put it here. I don't think I've forgotten anything. Let's run the transformation again. This is the last time. Probably should have prepared some jokes for this generation times. <laughs> Yep, so the year and uh, the, the name of the team. So I'm so glad it worked. Um, a few words about sharing. So like I said, you can, this uh, template, it's, um, it's a package. And what you can do is uh, the easiest way you can share it is to save it inside the project file like I did. So if you are working on Oxygen project files, uh, this custom template will be there with your, all your other resources. Um, all uh, your team has to do is just open this XPR file inside Oxygen, work uh, with it, and they will have access to the, this custom uh, template. A few words about uh, the PDF customization as well. Uh, my colleague Christian already presented a few things about this. Um, so the custom template applies to the data map PDF transformation, the one that's based on HTML5 and CSS. Uh, what's interesting about this 
uh, particular transformation is that uses HTML5 as an intermediate format on which, HT, uh, on which CSS is applied. And this HTML5 is similar with the HTML5 obtained for the web help responsive transformation. And um, in it, we inherit the data classes from the original uh, XML uh, document. These data attributes are something specific um, uh, to data. It's how you can identify a particular type of, um, of element. So for, for example, we, if we have here, if, if we have a look at the copyright Of, let's see the attributes, not this one. You see here that the class attribute for this particular element is topic slash copyright. A title is defined by this value for the class attribute. So these class attributes are uh, passed on uh, the HTML5 elements, which means that you can uh, reuse re uh, resources between web help and PDF transformation. Uh, you can reuse CSS uh, uh, rules because they can match on these class attributes. And um, let's see how we can make this template of ours apply for the PDF transformation as well. So what we need to do is to put a PDF element in here and we can reuse some things uh, like the preview image and the s resources, I will put them all here. Uh, I don't need a logo, so this, we will reuse the CSSs. We can put uh, the, the metadata as well. Well, we, we can remove these tiles because there will be no tiles in the PDF output, but the other ones can stay. And uh, besides these resources that I reuse from the, uh, from the web help transformation, I will copy another CSS uh, with Uh, we can have a look at it. Um, it's, this has specific rules for print. So let's put this as well inside the template. CSS, file, space print, like so. And now all we have to do is go to the configure transformations scenario dialog again uh, duplicate the data math pdf scenario uh, space exploration pdf uh, we have the metadata and we have the template we select it let's generate just the pdf transformation run in, runs in the background if you click uh, this little icon here, you also see more uh, output generated by the transformation. Oh, did, did it finish? I'm not sure what happened. Oh, it's here. Okay. Uh, how do I get rid of this? Right, so this is the PDF for my documentation. Not, it's not looking bad at all. But we can identify some issues that I will use as examples for uh, customizations. So if we have a look at this table with specifications, we see a huge API name that is bleeding outside the table. So we need to fix this. 
And if we have a look at the anomalies topic, we see that this list of anomalies um, span across multiple pages. That is again something that I want to avoid. And in the index, it would be great if the name of the topic and the number of the page would be on the same, on the same line. So let's see how, how we can do this. Well, uh, for the table, and because I'm feeling lucky, I will write this by hand. So the, the, the content that didn't fit the table, that was a table. So we can write a CSS uh, rule that matches the class attribute. And because the data class attributes are inherited, then I can just say here, uh, topic slash title, oops, slash table. I think that's uh, the, uh, the class value for the, for a data uh, table. And in it, we can say hyphens out author. And for the split, the problem was in an unordered list. So again, we can say if the class attribute is maybe, then page break inside should be avoided. Now for the index, it's a bit more uh, challenging. Um, what we need to do is we have to look at the, that intermediate HTML5 document. You've already seen it being presented by Christian. So you can find it in the output directory uh, where you've generated a PDF. Uh, we can switch to author mode. And somewhere at the bottom, we should see the index. And we can put full tags on to help us. And again, you can use the browser inspect styles uh, feature like uh, Christian did, or you can use it the, the CSS inspector inside Oxygen for the same thing. So if we take a look at the styles, so we, we need this entire content to be on the same line. It is on two <coughs> different lines because this uh, div element here, it's a block. And if we have a look at the path here, we'll notice that this div element has inherited the index formatted value um, class. So we, we can use this to write our CSS rule. Now this other div element here, it's also a block. We, we need to make it an inline. And it has this uh, value for the class attribute. We, we will use it to write our CSS rule. and. Um, the development containing the, the page number is actually already in line, but we can still write a rule to make it uh, bluish. Now, obviously, I will not write all these rules by hand. Um, again, I, ha I have hidden, hidden them here on the, on the bottom. We are also running out of time. I don't want to keep you away from your coffee. So uh, we match these uh, class attribute values. We make the, the elements in lines. We put a blue color here. All you have to do is save. Let's uh, close the PDF. And for the last time, we'll generate the output 
and we should see those issues being fixed. So, the table uh, doesn't bleed anymore, it wraps, the anomalies are all on the same page, and the index, you get uh, the, name of the title of the topic and uh, the page number right next to it. So, mission accomplished. Uh, yep, so... I wanted to uh, mention again the customization possibilities, like you can add various resources inside the template, logos, CSS files. You can extend the default processing using XSLT extensions or HTML fragments. You can put parameters inside it. Um, you can customize the layout pages, template pages. And for PDF output, you can customize various aspects with CSS styling. Just a few things um, of the customization possibilities available through this uh, Oxygen Publishing template. Thank you. If you have any questions or applauses. <laughs> <laughs>